Hey everyone, it's Kyle from Gravity here. Today I want to do a quick tutorial on a question I'm asked quite a lot, which is, uh, what is the structure of a modern JavaScript web application? So we're not gonna go into too much detail here, we're just gonna do a quick video on uh, the, the overall high-level architecture. And then every week I'm gonna do a new one of these videos and we'll dive a little bit deeper into to each of these topics. So today I wanna to talk about um, you know, what the structure of a, a, a Node.js and a React.js application is. So we'll, we'll look at the server, um, we'll look at how the application is configured, um, we'll touch a little bit on model view controllers, uh, we'll talk about the client application, how the client communicates with the server using the REST API, um, we'll talk a little bit about unit tests as well. So I've got a, a template boilerplate here that I use. So as you can see, we've got the folder structure, down the left here, so this this is pretty straightforward. So let's just let's just run through this. So um, I I create folders for all the main components of the application. So we've got the API here. Uh, we've got a bin, which is just some Node scripts um, that I've written. We've got the client, which is our React application. Config folder for the config files. Uh, we've got our controller files any transactional emails, uh, our model files. Uh, we've got some templates in here for generating models and controllers. We've got our unit tests, and then we've got our server. So we'll look at all these in a little bit of detail. So, you know, the first thing that you're gonna have to create when you're building a JavaScript app is a server. So I'm using Node.js and Express.js. So I've created a very simple server file here. So whenever I start my application, this server is gonna, gonna boot up and start a server on port 8080. Um, inside the server, um, you know, I'm creating some sessions here, defining a few express routes, uh, importing my API. And then I've got some global error handling here. So any any errors that occur in my application are then are they handled by this um, function. I will cover this in a separate tutorial, but basically, you know, these few lines of code save you from having to write uh, try catch statements everywhere. The server is not very complicated. Um, if you look at the Express.js documentation, um, this is pretty much very similar to the, the example that you'll see on there. So I've got a server. I've also got a database running in the background. You know, it, it's it's up to you which, which database you use. And I'm using MySQL. Um, uh, I just deploy, I create a new app on Heroku and add a new instance of MySQL and then, and then I'm ready to go. So, you know, once the application starts, the server will run. And then we've got some configuration set up in the application as well. So I use a node package called config and it basically creates this config folder. And inside this folder, you can have a configuration JSON file um, for each environment that you use. So if I go in here, this is just a basic JSON file. And in here I can have like my uh, information to connect to the database client, my Stripe keys, Stripe plans, all the different API keys and things that um, that I would use. Now, this is fine for some things. For very sensitive information like API keys, you really should store these in environment, variable, env environment variables uh, on your server. But for the purpose of this, um, and testing locally, this is fine. Now, the beauty of this package is you can have, you know, you can have a JSON file for each environment. So I can have my staging database configuration in here. Uh, then I have a production version, which overwrites the default one. So then I can overwrite and have a different database in here. So it means if I'm testing this locally, I can use my, my, my staging information. Uh, but if I want to deploy this on the live server, it'll automatically switch to using um, the environment, the production environment variable, and lo lo loading the production config. Okay, pretty straightforward so far. I hope. The next thing I have then is my client. So I'm using Create React App to create a 
uh, React.js application. So all this is inside my client folder. All my server files are in the root of the project. And then inside the client, I have my, you know, my front end stuff. You can put it into a server file. You can put all this stuff in the uh, server folder if you like, but it, it just creates a little bit more headache whenever you're trying to deploy your application. So inside the client folder, um, we've got our source folder. Inside here, we've got app. So basically app is just all my uh, React routes. And we'll go through all this in detail in a, in a future video, but basically got my routing in here. And then inside auth, I've got my auth context um, and things like you know, private root components so that I can protect routes um, from you know, for certain user groups, you know, who have people who don't have permission can't access um, specific routes, etc. So we've got basically, you know, our core application in here, authentication, and then I've got a folder of components. So these are all pre-built components that I use, um, so that I can just import these in whenever I need them. So we have everything from like tables um, to chart and cards, and this is all included in my Gravity boilerplate. I'll put a link in the description below, but. You know, we've got tons of like very complicated uh, components in here. So if I want to create a chart, you know, rather than having to write all this stuff uh, all the time, I can just import a component. So if I go into views here, then we've got views for each view in the application. So if I load up one of these as an example, uh, so here's my dashboard. And then you can see down here, you know, rather than having a whole bunch of HTML, you know, I'm just importing these pre-built components, we've got message, stat, uh, chart, and so on. So our React app is going to communicate with our Node.js server using our API. So I've got a folder here. I've split the API into a bunch of a bunch of like smaller files to make it easier to manage. So we've like, you know, endpoints for an account. So this will like create an account, update an account, etc. Um, and then I just have an index file where I import these. Um, if, you, if you've if you got a very small API, you can put it all into one file, but whenever you're dealing with a lot of endpoints, it just makes it a bit easier to, um, it just makes it a bit easier to manage when you break it up like this. So I'm gonna go into detail on how to build a REST API in another video, but basically what's gonna happen is our Create React app is gonna, um, you know, ping some of these endpoints. When the user tries to sign in, it's going to call this endpoint, and then this is going to this is going to be the handler. So I've got my auth controller sign in. This little use function is essentially this. And back at the start, when I talked about error handling here, so what is happening here is um, if I whenever I use this here, whenever I use this function, this is a higher order. Uh, function which is then calling this method and all this function is doing is you know trying to catch an error if it catches the error it forwards it on to this uh, error handler and it's a very it's a very efficient way of handling errors um, you know this means that anytime an endpoint is called if there's an if there's an error anywhere in your application this function will automatically catch it and forward it on to the error handler in our, in our service, our server file. So we don't have to write tons and tons and tons of try catch statements. So what is happening here is, you know, I'm imp I've imported a controller file. I'm going to go into model view controller in a, in a different um, video, but basically all our API endpoints will then call a controller just to give you a very high level explanation of that model view controller is essentially we've got three components to our application we've got our model which um, interacts with data and these are basically just little files that um, either insert or get things from the database then we have our controllers which is where all of the, the business logic for the application is and then we've got our views which was the views that we've seen in the in the react application so what is happening here is you know we post make a post request um, to this account endpoint this calls the create method of our account controller and then this handles all the logic for creating an account so it checks if the user's already registered it processes the stripe payment etc 
and these controller methods will use um, various models in order to to achieve what it is they need to achieve. So for example, um, here I've got an account get model. So in here, this is basically just get, you know, pass in the ID or email and, you know, return the account. The reason we split up um, the logic and the data is then these little models like get, like get an account can be used multiple times. If we added all of this code he here into the account controller here, it would work. But then if anywhere else in the application we needed to get the account, we got to rewrite all that code. So you can see when we were creating an account, we need to check does the account exist. If we go down to account get, got to get the account again here. We've got to get the account again. So you can see you would have a lot of code repetition. So splitting the logic into the controller and then adding the, the data interaction with the database into the model is just a very efficient way um, that, that dramatically cuts down um, the amount of code you need to write. Okay, so we've covered our client, our controllers, our models, and our REST API. And, and as I said, I'm going to go into each of these in much more detail in separate videos. So look, just to finish off, um, I just want to talk about a few other things here. So we've got a, a bin folder. Um, with Gravity, there is a command line tool belt um, available that lets you do things like create a, create a new API endpoint, create a new database table. Um, so these bin folders are essentially just command line scripts um, that run. So when you create a new view, um, it just you know it just some files and so on. So anything that is not really part of your central application, they're just other scripts. They might be scheduled scripts to run at certain points of the day. They can all go into the bin folder. And then finally, then inside the test folder here, I just have a number of of, of unit tests. So these are designed to call all of the API endpoints and test that they work. So. You can see here we've just got a, a lot of tests that like just run one after the other. So, tr you know, try and create a new account. It should create a new account. So that will send. Uh, we'll try and create a new account on the server, and then it checks. You know, what was the response? Um, there should have been a token. What was the plan name, etc. And we can just run these at any point to test that all of the different endpoints uh, in the application are working. So just to recap, you know, a modern JavaScript application then, you know, it consists of a couple of key things. We've got our server file um, that runs, manages all the API endpoints, and also handles the errors. We've got our database, which is in my case MySQL, uh, but you could also be using Mongo or Postgres or any other number of options. We've got our client, which is our front end application that, that runs in the browser. And then we've got our API, which enables the client to communicate with the backend application. And our API essentially, um, you know, it just handles the endpoint and then it controls a controller method. Our controller is where all the business logic is handled for the application, so all the heavy lifting here. Uh, our controller function will in addition to managing the logic, it will also use model files to insert, uh, get, and manipulate data. And then finally, we have some, we have our bin folder for just command line scripts that we may have. And then we have our test folder for running unit tests. I hope that was useful and give you a bit of an overview about what your application should um, look like and what all the different components do. I'm going to do one of these videos every week. Um, we'll jump into a bit of these topics in a bit more detail. So we'll actually look at um, how do you build a REST API, um, you know, how do you design a great user interface in React, and so on. So until next time, thank you very much.